in a can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario, the anesthetist should immediately undertake a cannula cricothyroidotomy or cannula tracheotomy to achieve safe, simple and fast oxygenation of the patient. The following video demonstrates how to safely insert a 14 gauge cannula through the cricothyroid membrane or trachea in a patient with a palpable neck anatomy in an attempt to jet oxygenate a patient. After removing the rear cap of a 14 gauge inside cannula, the cannula is attached to a 5 milliliter syringe containing 2 milliliters of saline. The syringe is held by the dominant hand while the non-dominant hand identifies and stabilizes the cricothyroid membrane. If the cricothyroid membrane cannot be identified, the trachea may be used as an alternative site for cannulation. While the cricothyroid membrane is stabilized, the cannula is inserted at an as shallow angle as possible into the skin. Once the tip of the cannula has punctured the skin, it is advanced using an aspirate-as-you-go technique the end point being aspiration of air up the full barrel of the syringe. Once air aspiration has been confirmed, the cannula hub is stabilized by holding the cannula with the non-dominant hand. The dominant hand can then stabilize the trocar while resting against the patient. While stabilizing the trocar, the non-dominant hand advances the cannula fully over the trocar into the airway before removing the trocar. Free aspiration of air up the full barrel of the syringe confirms patency of the cannula and correct placement of the cannula in the airway. When released, the plunger should remain fully retracted and not suck back down the barrel of the syringe. This is a vital and reliable check that must not be omitted prior to attaching an oxygenation device. Once the cannula's position in the airway has been confirmed, jet oxygenation can be commenced using a safe jet oxygenation device and technique. One Mississippi. Pre-loosening of the cannula from the trocar should not be performed, as it can lead to dislodgement of the cannula during insertion, risking a false positive result while performing a cannula cricothyroidotomy or cannula tracheotomy. Too steep angle of insertion of the cannula can result in kinking of the cannula inside the airway and failure to freely aspirate air or can potentially result in perforation of the posterior wall of the trachea. Inserting the cannula whilst not using the aspirate as you go technique can commonly result in perforation of the tracheal back wall and failure of the cannula technique. Cannula kinking inside the airway may prevent free aspiration of air in spite of correct placement. By carefully redrawing the cannula whilst aspirating for air, the kink may unfold. The cannula can open and free aspiration of air can be achieved. Inserting the cannula in a jigging motion can dislodge the cannula from the trocar resulting in a false positive aspiration of air. After verification of correct placement of the cannula inside the airway, a jet oxygenation device such as the Leroy or the Rapid O2 device can be used to jet oxygenate the patient. The main focus of the technique is to achieve safe, simple and fast oxygenation to stabilize the patient and prevent hypoxic injury before moving down the CICO algorithm. After confirmation of correct placement of the cannula, the jet oxygenation device is connected to the oxygen flow meter set at 15 liters per minute and attached to the cannula. The initial oxygen jet should be 4 seconds, delivering approximately 1000 milliliters of oxygen. Looking for chest movements recommended, but it's not always obvious. Following the initial jet, no further delivery should be undertaken until there is a response in oxygen saturation. Attaching 
a jet oxygenation device, the cannula should be manually fixated at all times. A firm grip of the cannula at skin level can kink the cannula and prevent effective jet oxygenation. By relaxing the grip and straightening out the cannula, patency may be restored and jet oxygenation commenced.